name is Wampoi Mamai Kamiro Collimore and I am an installation artist, which means that I give experiences within a particular space and I use all sorts of objects, usually everyday objects. My favorite way or my favorite elements are actually repetition and skill. My new work is All My Venus Days and this show opens in February 2022. The work itself focuses on the processing of grief and I chose the particular title All My Venus Days because on Venus, uh, it, the length of a day is 116 days and 18 hours of Earth Day. And I wanted to talk about the process through time and how time is an important element of uh, grieving. The work that I have created is work I have been processing over the last two years, almost three years. And the first iteration of it was actually in a smaller work. And the work was titled Pray For Us as we reply for delete and archive. And that particular work looked at the migration crisis and uh, how we as consumers of news don't necessarily take the time to process all the things that are happening when it comes to loss. Since then, this work has become even more important because grief has become a universal experience. We all know one person who we have lost through somebody else. As death has become closer to us. In my particular work, All My Venus Days, I am processing the loss of my husband um, who died three years ago. And in it, I show the experience of the grief when we found out that he had cancer and the time that we were working through his hospitalization and his healing, and then leading up to the point where he actually died. And then I further take it by processing the time after his death uh, up to where we are today. And I hope to be able to express this within this particular work. Of course, this work is an evolving piece. Um, most of my work actually does end up having various iterations, but I do hope that people will find some sort of solace within the work or clarity or the ability to question their own uh, losses, whether those are losses related to people they love or losses related to dreams or losses related to just, you know, being human. And since grief is such a, a human thing, I, I feel we can dig a lot from it and we can learn to appreciate life a lot more from the processing of grief. As much as this work is about my personal processing of grief, I want to open up the space to people who come and see the exhibition. And so I am requesting that if you have lost somebody or if you have lost something that was precious to you, um, you come with a picture of it, passport size picture, and within the exhibition there'll be the opportunity to place that um, in the work itself so that it evolves not just for me but also for the participants. Um, I, I like work that also engages audiences and in the past some of my work has had the ability to, you know, you could sit inside the installation and eat or you can move pieces around. And I love the interaction that people have with the work because I think art is, ca art cannot be created in isolation. It's created within uh, a community and within that community's experience. So please bring a photograph of what is precious to you that you have lost or that you want to place within the, the particular exhibition um, with reference specifically to grieving and the process of grief. Someone might ask why I would choose to present my work about some, such a personal um, emotion, feeling, state. And I would probably say that the reason I have chosen to do so is because this is my form of expression. I'm an artist. It's something that I am and it's something that I live. So to I guess to get to the next stage or to grow or to be or to clarify for myself, this is the only form that I could think of, which was to present this work. I had a conversation with um, one of my favorite artists, Yowia Kiambi, and we actually talked about whether you can create work 
and if you do a performance within that piece, whether you can make it personal so that you're the only audience member, you're the participant and the audience member, and how, whether that would be an option for this particular experience. And I have to say that initially I was tempted by that idea and I think there are particular elements of the work which will be done, just me and the work itself and documented because it's part of my process. But for this particular part of it, I felt I want to put it out there. I want to put it out there because I think there's a lot we can learn from the death of somebody who was so important to me and in some ways really influenced what this country has become. And because he wasn't just mine, because he be I think he belonged to all of us, I wanted to bring my community into the work and I wanted my community to experience the particular work. But I also wanted to provide a space for my community to heal of their own grief. And that's why I decided to present this as a public work. Because I think an element of grief as well is that, yes, you're alone in the process, but you, you come through the process because you, the person that you are grieving is no longer there. So that makes it that it's not you alone, but that you're in it with other people. You're in it with the person who, I mean, what comes to mind is an experience, another conversation I had with a good friend of mine. And I told him that I was missing my husband. And he said something that actually set, set this work in motion for me. And he said, I'm sure he's missing you too. And I hadn't realized that I'm not alone, that the person I have lost could also be experiencing the grief. And because he could also be experiencing the grief, then it's, it's amplified because he's, he's not just missing me, he's also missing you know, his mother, his sister, he's missing his colleagues, he's missing all these other people. And I thought to bring those people into the work, to allow them time within the work um, and hopefully to sort of like hold hands and walk through the process together. I think it's very important to note that when you approach this work, I don't, there's some emotions that are very, I'd consider unhelpful to a person who is grieving. And one of these emotions is, you know, when someone looks at a person who's grieving and what they have is a sense of pity or a sense that, you know, the, the person is, you know, disabled or has got some sort of debilita debilitating something that they're going through. And when people come to this work, I don't want you to come approaching it from a place of pity. Pity is not helpful. I want you to approach it from a place of empowerment because what the work does is it allows me to express a love. The reason I'm creating this work is not because I'm coming from a place of sadness. It's specifically because I'm coming from a place of love. And love is not something that you pity. Love is something that you cherish and you enjoy. Um, and I think generally when dealing with someone who is grieving, approach them knowing that they are experiencing grief because they have a lot of love and the person that they would have ordinarily given it to is just not present. So grief is the emotion that fills a space that once occupied, was once occupied by love for a particular person.